Hey guys, it's Girl Got Game, and welcome to another Gander video. Today, I bring you the demo for My Alien Roommate, which is the first visual novel by Wholesome Wraith, who is actually a member of our community. And uh, he was awesome enough to reach out to me through email and asked if I would consider doing a Gander of his very first demo, and I was like, absolutely, that sounds great. So that's what I'm going to try out today. The description for this game is... When an alien boy named Enoch lands on Riley's balcony one uneventful Sunday night, Riley's world is instantly turned upside down. Play as either the male or female protagonist, Riley, and the name is changeable, and navigate the complicated maze of academics, friendships, and rivalries that is high school, all while trying to keep the biggest secret in the entire world under wraps. The existence of your alien roommate. Pursue three male love interests in this romantic BX boy GXB visual novel. The socially anxious childhood friend Lucas. The intelligent but arrogant class president Felix Yang. Or last but not least, the man alien of the hour himself, Enoch. So there you guys go. That's our little introduction to my alien roommate. And yeah, let's just Hop right on in and get to know these cuties. Um, I am a she, her. And I'll keep the name as Riley. Why not? Riley is a cool name. <laughs> Tutorial time! Plus one! These icons will appear when you choose an option that either positively or negatively affects your relationship points, RP, with one of the three love interests. Very helpful. Not all choices result in a change in RP. Some choices simply lead to new lines of dialogue or scenarios to explore. Some choices may have greater RP gains than others. Some choices may have greater RP gains than others and greater losses. Some choices may also affect two separate characters' RP at the same time. You can't make them all love you. Note that certain choices may not affect RP until later in the game, once the consequences of your decision have taken effect. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> the stress. Uh... <laughs> I'm going to make so many bad choices. That's all you need to know. Have fun. Okay. Ooh, this is lovely. And several videos have been posted online tracking the unknown object across San Angeles. Whatever it is, it appears to be hurtling through the sky with no real sense of direction. The most popular theory at the moment is that this could be our first real sighting of an unidentified flying object, otherwise known as a UFO. What do you think, Beatrice? Cornelius, I can't tell you how many images I've seen over the years that, supposedly, prove the existence of aliens or ghosts or urban legends, and they never do. Unless I see this so-called UFO with my own two eyes, I imagine it'll be just like all the others. Another unsolved mystery. A UFO? No way! Setting down my bowl of ice cream, I reach for my phone. Looking up hashtag UFO, my local litter timeline is littered, <laughs> I love that, with dozens of grainy phone recorded videos featuring an orange speck of light streaking haphazardly through the night sky. That's it? That could literally be anything. People think that's a UFO? Kaboom! Still enraptured by my phone, I don't hear the muted explosion in the distance. The most recent video looks like it was shot in the park. Whatever that orange speck is, it might be getting close. I'm still scrolling through my timeline when a soft thump catches my attention. What was that? Something moves out of the corner of my eye. I turn to look out the window and my jaw drops. <gasps> my heart skips a beat. There's a boy perched outside my balcony. That music is so good. 
Considering I live on the top floor, boys randomly showing up on my balcony is a shock in and of itself. But one look at him makes it clear he's no ordinary boy. His skin... is purple. I'm not imagining that, am I? I squeeze my eyes shut for a few seconds before opening them again. He's still there. This is real. Hooked around his waist and draped over the edge of the balcony is a rapidly deflating parachute. He touches the floor and pauses, like he's taking a deep breath to calm himself. Whoa! We've been spotted. It's then that he realizes he's not alone either. He turns his head, eyes locking onto mine, and I get another shock when I see the unnatural red shade of his pupils. For a few moments, we stare wordlessly back at one another. <laughs> Yo! At last, he raises a hand and smiles at me. Hello! That's the last thing I remember before I black out. Katunk. Uh. The room slowly comes back into focus. Rubbing my eyes, I stare up at the ceiling, trying to remember how I ended up on the couch. What happened? Glancing to my left, I see my bowl of ice cream sitting where I left it on the coffee table. Aw, oh, man. It's all melted. Did I fall asleep while eating? No, wait. There was a cutie on the balcony. Wait a second. I blacked out, didn't I? Because I saw... Or at least I thought I saw... But no. No, I couldn't have. Nervous, I take a quick peek out the balcony to check if the intruder is still there and breathe a sigh of relief when I find it empty. See? It was... Just a dream. Just a silly, harmless, sugar rush induced dream. Oh! You're awake! A cheerful purple face fills my vision, looming over me with a bright smile. Hello again! Nah! Nah! Toppling onto the floor, I scuttle away from the purple intruder as fast as I can, even as he backs away from me just as quickly. You! Y you're... J just calm down, okay? Who are you? What do you want from me? It's okay. I'm not here to hurt you. I just... He takes a step towards me and I scream. Get back! Okay, okay. Just... Just calm down, alright? I somehow know your name. He swallows, eyes darting to the front door, as if nervous someone's about to barge in after hearing our screams of terror. It's the purple skin, right? That's what freaks you out. Th that's okay! I can change it, alright? Watch! Well, that's a neat trick. His body appears to change shape before my very eyes, blurring in and out of focus until... Ta-da! <laughs> All better! Gah! How'd you do that? W what the hell are you? Oh, come on! Isn't this any better? D demon You're a demon! Demon? Hey, you take that back! I'm no demon! S stay back, demon! I already said I'm not a... Looking around for something to throw, I pick up a fallen DVD and toss it in his direction. It bounces off his forehead and he stumbles back, eyes wide with almost comical surprise. Wh what was that for? For making sure you stay as far away from me as possible! Take this! I throw another DVD at him. Ow! Hey, quit it! That hurts, you know! I scramble to my feet and dash into the kitchen, pulling a fresh string of herbs off the wall. Okay. Get back! Back, I say! I brandish the string of herbs at him like a whip. I like that I ran to the kitchen and got herbs and not, like, a kitchen knife. <laughs> Have that thee, demon! Take my garlic. 
Really? Yeah, this is pretty dumb. Would you just listen to me? I'm trying to talk to you! Abandoning the herbs, I pick up the next closest thing to a weapon. A wickedly sharp kitchen knife. That's the next closest thing, eh? The fear returns to the intruder's eyes. W what are you gonna do with that? I'll... I'll hurt you with this if you come any closer. I mean it. I'm dangerous. And I sure sound like it. Okay, okay! Clearly frightened by the knife, the once purple intruder takes on a more defensive stance, backed up against the opposite wall. I'll stay right here. Is that better? Please. I just want to talk. I hope you can't see how badly my hand's trembling, even as I heft the blade with, with as threatening an aura I can muster. I've never stabbed a person before. Or, well, whatever he is. Do I have it in me? It always looks so easy in the movies. Standing here now with a knife in my hand I'm not planning to chop onions with, it suddenly feels a lot more daunting. Even if I can't muster up the guts to use it, just having a weapon in hand makes me feel a little less defenseless. Having calmed down a little, I take a closer look at the boy. Now that he's no longer purple, he looks convincingly human. He's also changed out of whatever outfit he'd been wearing when I first saw him. Are you wearing my stuff? The clothes he has on now are strangely... familiar. Hang on. Are you... wearing my pajamas? Um... S sorry <laughs> The music changed. So good. Unbelievable. My other clothes were singed. And I didn't want to track ashes all over your house, so I thought... So you thought you'd just invite yourself in and parade around in my clothes? I... I'm sorry! Who in their right mind... Okay. Actually, they fit you surprisingly well. But seriously! Who in their right mind does something like that? Who the hell are you? Talk. Now! All right, all right. My name's Enoch. Well, who or what are you, Enoch? I'm... Well, I'm a Zaxelian. He says it like it's the most matter-of-fact thing in the world, which exasper exasperates me further. I don't know what that means. Is that some new species of animal or something? What are you exactly? Animal? How rude! Do I look like an animal to you? I don't know what you look like because you're definitely not human. I mean, what human has those eyes or that purple skin? What human can turn that on and off at will? I told you! I'm Zexhalian! I'm... So close. Dropping his voice to a whisper, he leans in while keeping his fearful gaze trained on the knife in my hand. Actually, just a second. I'm going to... The music's just kind of blasting me a little bit. There we go. Ah, much better. Uh, dropping his voice to a whisper, he leans in while keeping his fearful gaze trained on the knife in my hand. Truth is, I'm not from... Around here, if you, uh, know what I mean. Oh, you think? What do you mean, not from around here? You mean, like, I'm not from Earth? His words make my stomach drop. I come from Zex... Well, I come from outer space, okay? Holy mackerel! It's gotten to the point where I can't say I'm surprised by the revelation. And part of me suspected it from the get-go, what with the purple skin and all. But that doesn't make it come as any less of a shock. Y you y you mean you're a... Uh... My voice is shaking as badly as my hands are once more. Y you're... an alien? Hmm... I suppose to you humans, I would fit the definition of an alien, so... Yes! 
Yes, I am! <laughs> um... It's nice to meet you! <laughs> Even though you've probably never met an alien before. And I probably should have asked for permission first before wearing your clothes. I hope that won't stop us from becoming friends! I've never befriended a human before. Or even spoken to one, for that matter. So this is exciting! <laughs> What's your name, new human friend? Uh, 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 hello? Oh, sorry. Did I... space out? I know this must be hard to take in, considering you humans probably didn't know other species existed in the universe besides yourselves, but... Hard to take in. Hard to take in! Oh, not at all. What's there to take in? You know, besides the fact that I have an alien in my kitchen! Are you alright? You look a little... pale. <laughs> and I'm gone. The last thing I remember before blacking out again is Enoch running to catch me before I hit the floor. Probably for the best, in case I fell on the knife I had in my hand. Hopefully I didn't stab you too. Plop. Down I go. One week later. Chapter 1. School Days. Week 1. Monday. Alright, so after that, you know, things are kind of settled somehow. <laughs> the smell of burning bacon hits me before I'm even fully awake. Burning bacon? Wow. That is a clean room. I turn over in bed and, to my horror, spot a couple of wisps of smoke seeping into my bedroom through a gap in the door. Oh, great. What's he done this time? Still groggy, I drag myself out of bed and stumble towards the kitchen. Riley! You're awake! Enoch, what are you... Enoch beams with pride as he presents the frying pan in his hand to me for inspection. I made breakfast! You... what? Looky here! Bacon and eggs, exactly like you made the other day! Want some? The smoldering, coal-like lumps he's struggling to scrape out of the pan and onto the nearest plate look nothing like bacon and eggs. Ugh, it smells awful. What did you do? Well, I wasn't sure how long to cook it for. You said humans can't eat most foods raw, so I wanted to be sure it was safe to eat. Judging by that burnt smell, the food being raw will be the least of my problems. I thought I told you not to mess around in the kitchen without me. You make it sound like I'm causing trouble on purpose. I was just trying to make us breakfast. But why? I could have done it if you were hungry. All you had to do was wake me up. I wanted to make you food for once. You're always the one making food for me. It's only common courtesy, even among us aliens, to do something nice for someone who does something nice for you first. Enoch, I appreciate the sentiment. Really, I do. But you're just making more work for me. You could have set the whole place on fire. What do you think would have happened then if I'd had to save us both from a burning building? Aren't you overreacting a little? See, everything's fine. No fire here. And thank goodness for that. Hey, come on. My cooking isn't that bad. Is it? I look down at the plate of charred mush sitting before me and sigh, trying to keep my temper in check. I can't be mad at him for being curious, he has every right to be. Still, sometimes I can't help but wonder if keeping him around isn't more trouble than it's worth. Now that the novelty of having an alien roommate has more or less worn off, I'm starting to realize the drawbacks of living with one. The constant fear of getting discovered, for starters. Not to mention taking care of him and teaching him about Earth so he doesn't do something stupid and blow his cover. Or get us both killed in a house fire, for that matter. You want to try your cooking? Fine. 
But next time, let me watch over you while you do, just in case something goes wrong, okay? Uh, okay. Come on, help me clean up. There's bacon grease and eggshells all over the place. And throw that burnt mess out already! <laughs> oh, goodbye, bacon and eggs. To think I worked so hard on you. I'm, I'm upset that you wasted perfectly good bacon and eggs. <laughs> Together, Enoch and I put the kitchen back in order and dispose of his pitiful attempt at cooking us food. By the time we finish, a good 15 minutes have gone by and my stomach grumbles in protest. Breakfast is a bust, so... Guess I'll buy something to eat on the way to school. Oh! Can I come with you? Enoch, we've been over this. You can't come to school with me, it's too risky. But why? Can't we just say I'm your dashingly handsome foreign exchange student friend who needs to be by your side at all times? No one would question us if that was the case. Especially given how accurate the dashingly handsome part is. Everyone would question us, it doesn't work like that. You'd need papers for registration to prove you were supposed to be there, and there'd be all sorts of admin matters to, well, to sort through. Bottom line, it just wouldn't work out. Fine. Can I come with you at least? Just to drop you off? Pfft. Why? You're not my mom. No, but that way I can get something to eat too. I haven't had breakfast either, you know. Plus, I'd really like to try more of those craps we've had the other day. Say what now? You know, from Cozy Craps. Oh, Cozy Crepes? Please don't call them craps in public. So, can we go? Can we? Can we? Can we? I don't know. Can you find your way home afterwards? I don't want you getting lost. I can find my way back just fine! After all, I made it to Earth all by myself, didn't I? Enoch, you almost died in a fiery explosion along the way. Keyword being, almost. Even if you hadn't died, you almost killed me with a heart attack, that's for sure. I pinched the bridge of my nose in frustration. If I let you come back on your own, are you absolutely sure you can find your way home? Of course! What if someone sees you? Then all they'll see is an impossibly charming, attractive human male walking around on his own during the day. That's not a crime on Earth, is it? Wait, is it? I suppose you've got a point. About no one recognizing you, I mean. Not the part about the charming, attractive... Never mind. You're acting like this is my first time leaving the apartment. Haven't you taken me out a few times already? Why should it be any different if I'm on my own as opposed to being with you? I'm just worried that if you're on your own, you'll do or say something us humans consider... inappropriate. Inappropriate? Me? Never. Enoch. Come on, Riley. When have I ever been inappropriate? Remember when I took you to the convenience store and you tried swallowing a chocolate bar whole, wrapper and all? Without pain, might I add? You can't blame me for that. You were the one who said everything on the shelves was edible. What about that time we crossed the street and you didn't know how a traffic light worked? Yeah, but... That was one time. I know better now. And it's not like anyone got hurt. You saw a bus driving towards you, stood there, and waved at it. How was I supposed to know that humans ride around in large metal death machines? Last but not least, need I mention... the urinal incident? Ugh. Don't remind me. Do you Earthlings have no shame? Why stand around doing your business in public when the proper thing to do is take care of it in the safe, secure space of an enclosed cubicle? It's outrageous! It's not in public. That's the whole point of a restroom. Even so, no one runs out of a public restroom screaming and doesn't get asked a ton of questions. 
Okay. So, you may have a point. But this time will be different. I promise I won't do anything you wouldn't do yourself. <sighs> I can't say it's fair either to keep you locked up in here all the time like a household pet. Fine. You can come with me today, but only far enough to get some food. Once done, head straight back here. I can't explore on my own? Not even a little. I don't want you going someplace you're not supposed to, like a police station or some shady alley. Point is, no detours. Straight back here. Understood? Yes, ma'am. Can I still drop you off at school like I wanted? Sure. There's no harm in walking a few more blocks, I suppose. That's good enough for me! I should go get ready. Oh, me too! What should I wear today, Riley? <laughs> wear whatever you like. Except your pajamas, of course. Yeah, but your Earthling fashion trends are so confusing. You either bundle up in cocoons of thick coats and heavy jackets, or you barely wear anything at all. It's bizarre. Over the past week, I've discovered that Enoch isn't affected by extreme temperatures on either end of the spectrum. Lucky. On the hottest day last week, we took a walk through the neighborhood with him dressed in one of my aunt's wooliest coats, and he barely broke a sweat. Similarly, the one time it rained, he stood out on the balcony in little more than what he's wearing now and didn't shiver once. What shocked me most, however, was seeing him hold his hand over an open flame without even flinching. Of course, I hadn't known about his supposed immunity to burn wounds and had freaked out, convinced he was trying to set himself on fire for, for some maniacal reason. Whatever, then. I'll just put on something super snazzy. And draw more attention to yourself? Isn't the whole point to not stand out too much since we're trying to avoid unwanted attention? He'll just dress so overt, it's covert. It'll be fine. Why would dressing nicely make me suspicious? You don't think all well-dressed people on Earth are aliens in disguise, do you? That's not what I meant. I just think, given the circumstances, your priority should be to look less... conspicuous. Relax, Riley. I told you. My human disguise is flawless. Outfit or no outfit, there's no way I'm getting found out. Outfit, please. Not no outfit. Nudity will make you very conspicuous. Besides, I'd stand out with or without fancy clothes anyway, because of how attractive a human I make. As you humans say, clothes don't make the man. Or... And in my case, clothes don't make the alien? Just get changed. I watch as he bounds off to his bedroom, the guest room, in a hurry. Shaking my head, I depart from my own room to gather my things. Are we, like, super rich? Because we have, like, the nicest place. <laughs> Even now, a week after accepting Enoch as my roommate, it's still hard to wrap my head around the fact that I have a real, honest-to-goodness alien living under my roof. But it does get easier to accept with every passing day I spend with him. Enoch, for all his eccentricities and inadequate knowledge of acceptable human behavior, can more or less pass himself off as a normal human being. A very clumsy, goofy, naive excuse of one. It's true he knows almost nothing about humanity. Not our customs, traditions, culture, or technology. Nothing. Yet, surprisingly enough, Earth and his home planet, Zexhalia, do share some things in common. For instance, Enoch understands the concept behind buildings and schools, but not cars or urinals. He'd been endlessly fascinated by the primitive technology behind mundane things like spoons and forks, yet is completely familiar with furniture like tables and chairs. Some things are just universal, I suppose. Pun fully intended. Most miraculous of all is the fact that he speaks English, right? Apparently, according to him at least, his species has evolved to the point that they're capable of univer universal translation. It doesn't help him pick up on words and phrases he needs context to understand, 
nor does he understand words for which there exists no Zexhalian equivalent. For the most part, though, I am able to converse with him as well as I would anyone else. Taking care of him would have been twice as hard if he spoke some weird alien language and neither of us could understand the other. Like all living beings, Enoch needs to eat to survive, although his knowledge of what constitutes human food is severely lacking. I recall the very first meal I made for him on the night we first met. It brrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr
that never fails to impress no matter how many times you do it. Mrs. Potts is watering her plants in the corridor when Enoch and I step out. She straightens at the sight of us and her eyebrows shoot up into her hat. I recognize the hungry look on her face and brace myself for the inevitable questions. Good morning, Riley! Off to school, are we? Do you have a crab ring, madam? Because if so, I love it. Yes, Mrs. Potts. Daisy, Mrs. Potts' six-year-old granddaughter, peeks out from behind her grandmother, staring up at us with big, round eyes. Enoch smiles and waves at her. Your Aunt Josephine's not back yet, is she? I'm not sure when she's coming back. Until then, it's just me. And Enoch, I guess. All right. She cocks her head to the side, a coy smile on her face. Not to assume, but is he a relative, perhaps? Uh... Hi, I'm Enoch, Riley's new roommate. I don't believe we were ever introduced. It's very nice to meet you, Enoch. I'm Mrs. Potts, Riley's neighbor. Enoch's a friend, I know. From afar. Very afar. I shoot him a look. As I was saying, um, he's staying with me for the time being. Oh, but of course. I figured it had to be something like that. What do you mean? Well, I didn't want to say anything at first in case I was mistaken, but... The first time I saw you two together, I couldn't help but think that you might have been... You know... <laughs> she wiggles her eyebrows suggestively at me. I... I have no idea what you're implying. What? You know... N no, I don't know. Yes, you do. Uh... I really don't. Really, dear? Must I spell it out for you? I thought you were taking your secret boyfriend home to spend the night. I'm not surprised her mind went there, but Mrs. Potts' words still make my breath hitch in my throat. M Mrs. Potts! It's... it's not like that at all. Enoch's just my roommate, honest. I figure, dear, I'm just teasing. Oh, listen to me. I must sound like such a busybody. But let an old woman's thoughts wander, won't you? It makes me feel young again. I may not have come to the wrong conclusion, but had a different neighbor witness the same thing I did. You remember how chatty a certain couple used to be. I glance at the empty apartment over her shoulder, vacant now that the couple who lived there has moved out. Our old neighbors, Tripp and Grace, had always been cordial to me and Mrs. Potts. But even though they lived two doors down, I'd often hear their famously vicious squabbles late into the night. The part of me that longs for a good night's sleep is somewhat thankful they finally moved away. I just hope, for the sake of their future neighbors, that they've also moved within vicinity of a proper couples counselor. While Mrs. Potts and I have been talking, Enoch and Daisy have spent the last two minutes ignoring our conversation. She's taken him by the hand and is showing him some of her grandmother's beloved potted plants. Your plants are growing great, Mrs. Potts. I don't know how you do it. Oh, that reminds me. I'd be happy to lend a hand with your garden, should you need it. I've seen Josephine's balcony, and it can be a lot to handle if you don't have much experience gardening. Aunt Jo left her balcony garden in my care when she first handed me the keys to her apartment. I've been doing my best to water the plants every day on her behalf, but I'm not the most... responsible of caretakers. There have been days where I simply... forget to water them. Sometimes those days stretch into weeks. You'd think, given I see them outside the window every day, that I'd remember to water them daily. But as an only child, I've never had to take care of anything that required much responsibility, like plants, pets, or a younger sibling. I wonder if that's why being Enoch's roommate has given me so much grief. 
That's all right, Mrs. Potts, but I appreciate the offer. I whip out my phone to check the time. S sorry but we really should be going, or we're gonna be late for... Well, I'm gonna be late for school. Oh, don't apologize. I won't hold either of you up any longer. Daisy! Say goodbye to the nice young man. Bye! Bye, Daisy! I usher Enoch past the two Potts ladies with a final wave goodbye as we hurry into the elevator. Enoch waits for the doors to slide shut before speaking again. Your neighbors are such pleasant people. Why wouldn't you let me talk to them before? I was worried you'd give yourself away. I wasn't sure you'd be able to convincingly act like a... You know. I glance up at the security camera installed in the ceiling. It probably doesn't pick up audio, but it pays to be careful. Well, now that you've spent a week with me, you know you can trust my acting skills, right? <laughs> right? Mm. Riley, say something! <laughs> Man, I love the art in this game. It's so freaking pretty! Enoch and I follow the streets to school. I've taken him down this path before, but he still can't help looking around in wonder be it to gawk at birds chirping in the trees or at cars driving down the road. Riley, look! That crap place is up ahead! Crepe, Enoch. It's pronounced crepe. But please don't be so loud. Can we stop there for breakfast? Um, I was thinking we could just grab a hot dog along the way or something. What if there's a long line? We can't sit down and eat or I'll be late for school. Well, buy some crepes to go and be quick about it. It won't take long. You know I'll stop by on my way home, even if you say no. That means I'd be in there. All alone. On my own. Without you to watch me. Who knows what kind of shenanigans I could get up to. Are... Are you threatening me? I would never do something so depraved. I'm simply insinuating that worse things might happen later. If you don't go with me now. In other words, it is a threat. Again, I wouldn't use such a barbaric term for it. I'd like to think of it as a... Gentle suggestion. <sighs> You're awful sometimes, you know that? Fine, we'll go in, but we can't stay too long, alright? Cozy crepe. Man, the detail in these backgrounds is so nice. I love. Cozy Crepe Cafe, or Cozy Crepes as it's known colloquially, is a quaint little dessert cafe that sells all kinds of sweet treats. Primarily, though, they're best known for, shocker, their crepes. These delectable delights have captured the hearts of many a customer, especially Enoch. I'll take two crepes, please. Oh, I want chocolate sauce on mine, and whipped cream, and banana slices, and peanut butter, and strawberries, and... Whoa, easy there! I'm not made of money, you know. I let Enoch rattle off all his desired toppings, within budget, before choosing what I want. That'll be ten dollars. Enoch pouts as I hand the money over. Only two crepes? Last time we came, you ate ten all by yourself. We had so many people staring at us. It's because they were fascinated and amazed by the insurmountable depths of my appetite. More like mortified and appalled. I know I was, at any rate. Then... At least one more won't hurt, right? He flashes me his trademark puppy dog eyes. You couldn't be so heartless as to say no to this face, could you? Who knew aliens could be this manipulative? I mean, who eats just one crepe for breakfast? Just one isn't enough, Riley. <sighs> I do like you. So, and ten dollars for two crepes, it sounds really good. <laughs> well, I think we can afford one more. 
one more and that's it, okay? Wow, plus one, who knew? Enoch bounces up and down on the balls of his feet, visibly delighted. That's all I'm asking for. You're the best, Riley. I hand another five dollars over to the cashier. The cashier hands us our crepes as we step out of line. Enoch wastes no time taking a big bite out of one of his. Mmm, just as good as I remembered. Riley? That voice. Oh, hello. Um, I love your spider medallion thing. Very cool. There stands Lucas, a crepe clutched in one hand and his phone in the other. A lack of surprise on his usually stoic face. <laughs> and I gave you the voice too! <laughs> oh, yay! It's serendipitous. His eyes are fixed on Enoch as if unsure what to make of him. He approaches us cautiously. Hey, Lucas. Hey. I, uh, didn't expect to see you here. I was hungry and had a craving for crepes. His eyes swivel back to Enoch with guarded curiosity. Who's your friend? Oh, this is, um... Hi! I'm Enoch, Riley's new roommate! You... are? You never told me you got a roommate, Riley. How long has this been going on? Only a week. It's... a bit of a recent development. It's nice to meet you! What's your name? Lucas swallows, visibly uncomfortable around Enoch's almost overbearingly sunny disposition. Um... My name's Lucas. I'm Riley's classmate. My classmate? Don't listen to him, Enoch. Lucas is just being modest. This guy's my best bud! Calling himself just my classmate is putting it mildly. Lucas and I have known each other for more than a decade now. He's my oldest and bestest friend, although our mutual friend Kat is a close second. Our friendship had a pretty classic beginning. We met at the local playground after he'd recently moved to the neighborhood and didn't know anyone. I'd taken it upon myself to befriend the lonely, friendless boy sitting by himself on the swings. And the rest, as they say, is history. I think I'm gonna like Lucas. We shared the same interests in video games. We went to school together, hung out at each other's houses, and got to know each other's families. We told each other everything. Well, almost everything. Best friend or not, I doubt even Lucas would have kept his cool if I had told him I had an alien roommate. Pocketing his phone, Lucas holds his free hand out for Enoch to shake. Enoch, who hasn't had reason to shake another person's hand so far, stares down blankly at Lucas's outstretched hand before dutifully, du dutifully handing over his half-eaten crepe. Did you want my crepe? Here you go. What the- N no Enoch, he doesn't want your food, he just wants to shake your hand. Shake my hand? Like, waving? Enoch waves directly in Lucas's face. No, shake his hand. Wide-eyed, Enoch takes hold of Lucas's wrist and starts to flail his hand about. Like this? Please stop. Why did I teach him how to wave at someone, but not how to shake someone's hand? We're starting to attract attention. I hear a couple girlish giggles and spot a few people pointing. People are judging us! Oh my god! Enoch, just do as I do, alright? I take Lucas's hand and shake it to demonstrate. Pleased to meet you, Riley. What? Oh, be quiet, Lucas. Anyway... There you go, Enoch. That's what people do when they meet someone for the first time. Really? What a peculiar custom. I take it you're not from around here, are you? He comes from... uh... afar? Very afar! You've gotta stop using that word like that. 
Either way, they don't shake hands where Enoch's from. They, uh, do something else. What do they do anyway? Is there some sort of alien greeting ritual I don't know about? I'll have to ask Enoch later. Well, however you're used to doing it, Enoch, here we just shake hands. Point taken. Then let's shake hands. Enoch happily takes Lucas's hand and shakes it a bit too vigorously. Th that's enough, thanks. So what are you doing here, Riley? Don't you usually eat breakfast at home? Yeah, there was an incident in my kitchen, so we decided to grab a bite to eat along the way. If your roommate isn't attending school with us, why is he following you? He wanted to drop me off, that's all. How thoughtful of him. Speaking of which, we should get going to make sure we're on time, don't you think? The three of us leave cozy crepes and follow the path to school. Lucas, having finished his food first, keeps his hands in his pockets as we walk. He's a lot less chatty than he normally is, which isn't saying much now that Enoch is with us. That doesn't surprise me, though. Lucas has always been uneasy around strangers. Enoch busies himself polishing off his two crepes, seemingly unbothered by the chocolate sauce slathered all over his face and cheeks. Once he's done licking cream off his fingers, oblivious to the awkward vibe in the air, he wastes no time striking up conversation. So, Lucas, how did you and Riley meet? Hmm? Enoch inches a little closer to Lucas as we walk. How long have you two been friends? Uh... How close are you guys? You're really close, right? <laughs> like, this close. Close friends? Not as close as you and I are now. Oh! Sorry. But you guys tell each other everything, right? That's what best friends do? I guess. Why? I'm just trying to get to know you better, that's all. So how often do you two hang out? Do you come over to her house often? <laughs> Sky. What do you guys do for fun? What do you learn in school together? Like the introvert's worst nightmare. How many years have you two been friends? You asked that already. But you didn't answer. Lucas meets my eyes and shoots me a silent plea for help. He's uncomfortable enough in most social situations, let alone now with someone as unaware of social cues as Enoch showering him with questions. Um, I don't want to answer. I was gonna, I was hoping I'd be able to distract. <laughs> um, yeah, like I don't want to just take over for you, but you can do it, buddy. I believe in you. I give Lucas a nod of encouragement, and what I hope he'll see is a reassuring smile. Uh... Um... Yeah. Like she said, Riley and I have been friends since we were little. Enoch waits expectantly, face bright with anticipation, but Lucas doesn't elaborate. What? That's it? What else is there to say? I don't know. I was expecting more of a backstory. Sorry to disappoint you. Surely there's more than that. I don't know what you want me to say, man. Tell me more about yourself, Lucas. How many siblings do you have? What do you like most about Riley? Do you have a favorite color? What do you often dream about? Do you ever think about your place in the universe? What's your favorite food? Is it craps? Is it... what? It is crepes! I knew it! But I didn't... I knew you and I would have something in common! You and I are like two feathers on a bird! Sh sure Ahem. <clears throat> it's birds of a feather. Isn't that what I said? Not quite. This is where you intervene? To correct his English? 
Lucas and I are like two peas on a pod, then. <clears throat> peas in a pod? What's the difference? Oh, would you look at that? We've arrived. Thank goodness. Poor Lucas. Our school looms down the road within sight. A couple stragglers are still trickling in, but it's clear Lucas and I will be late if we don't pick up the pace. We have a bit more to go before we reach the gates, but it's pretty obvious that all Lucas wants is to put an end to this painfully one-sided conversation. I mean, it seems obvious to me, but I'm not sure Enoch's caught on yet. Alright, Enoch, this is where we part ways. Aw, but I was enjoying the fresh air! There's air everywhere. You can still breathe it at home. It's not the same! I'm just... gonna... go on ahead. <laughs> I wait for Lucas to walk a bit further before lowering my voice. Sorry, Enoch. Just head home and wait for me, alright? Riley, I'm bored! I want to explore! For an entire week, I stayed home like you asked because you weren't sure how I'd behave around other Earthlings. People! Call them people. Please don't call humans Earthlings when we're outside. On that note, don't refer to humans as humans either. Do you have any idea how suspicious you sound? I get that you're worried I'll give myself away, but it's been a week. I didn't risk my life coming all the way to Earth. Shh! Not so loud! To just sit around your apartment all day! Enoch folds his arms defensively across his chest. I can tell he inten intends to stand his ground on this matter. Earth could be my home for the foreseeable future. I want... No, I need to explore as much as I can on my own. I need to learn to live amongst other humans in order to blend in, don't I? I won't learn that lazing around on your couch doing nothing for hours on end. Haven't you enjoyed the movies I set aside for you? Don't get me wrong. Marathoning your aunt's movies has been great. But there's only so much I can learn about humanity from the movies. I want to experience more of it firsthand. To learn about your culture and customs in person. Otherwise, how will I hold a conversation with people like Lucas? I won't learn to interact with other humans if you're the only one I ever get to talk to. Enoch, you didn't even know how to shake someone's hand ten min minutes ago. Now you expect me to let you run amok by yourself and not get into some kind of trouble? I'm only looking out for you here. Good grief, I sound like an overprotective parent. Besides, you promised you'd return home right away. That was the deal. It was? I don't remember that. Oh, really? Point is, no detours. Straight back here. Understood? Yes, ma'am. What? When did that happen? Okay, fine. You're right. That was the deal. But how about I make you a new deal? I don't walk more than 10 minutes distance from the apartment, and I don't talk to or make eye contact with anyone. Surely that's okay. Is it? I know how badly Enoch wants to see more of the city. It isn't fair to keep him stuck at home all the time, no matter the reason. Perhaps if I let him explore on his own, as long as he keeps to his word to not go too far or talk to anyone he shouldn't, he'll be fine? He may not be from Earth, but he's not a child. I should trust him more. Then again, there's still so much about Earth he's unaware of. How to shake someone's hand, for instance. And how to not invade someone's personal space during a conversation. What if he accidentally offends someone he passes on the street? What if he really does get hit by a bus when crossing the road and I'm not there to pull him out of harm's way? What if he falls through a manhole and ends up hopelessly lost in the sewers and can't find his way out? Okay, that was a little far-fetched, but still. He's annoyed now, but I have his best interests at heart, don't I? I mean, I feel like he's just going to explore anyway. <laughs> I mean, we don't own him. He's, he's an alien. He can do what he wants. 
All right. R really? As long as you promise you won't go too far or talk to too many people. Don't do anything weird or abnormal if you're not sure it's culturally acceptable here on Earth. Matter of fact, try not to do anything except walk and look around. Got it? That works for me! Thanks, Riley. I appreciate it. Now get out of here. I gotta get to school. I'll see you when you get home. Enoch practically skips away a bundle of energy. I just can't say no to that face. Shaking my head, I hurry over to rejoin Lucas, who puts his phone away when he sees me approaching. Uh, sorry about that. Shall we? Your roommate's a weirdo. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know. Lucas and I burst into class five minutes past the first bell. Writing something on the whiteboard, our teacher, Miss Fortune, frowns at our late arrival. Sorry we're late, ma'am! Yeah, sorry. My eyes flicker over to the source of the disdainful utterance. Final boy? Of course it is. Standing there in his tightly buttoned up, crisply ironed shirt is none other than class president, Felix Yang in all his arrogant, smarmy glory. Hello. Can't even do something as simple as make it to school on time, Riley. He regards me with a- with- bleh, Try that again. He regards me now with that familiar smirk of his I've come to know and hate. You don't even live that far away. You really are hopeless. I can hear the contempt dripping from every syllable that leaves his mouth. Where do I even begin with this guy? For the last year and a half since he transferred to our school, Felix and I haven't exactly had what you'd call a smooth sailing relationship. How do you know where I live anyway? Stalker much? In your dreams? Well, that was very defensive. Dreams? You wish. Any dream you're in automatically becomes a nightmare. This typically goes back and forth for a while. It's the whole crux of my relationship with Felix. He makes a snide comment about me, I fire back, and we take shots at each other until someone tires out. I'll have you know that as class president, it's one of my duties to keep up to date with everyone's current addresses. Because unlike a certain someone, I know how to be responsible and organized. Can he get any more obnoxious? Yet my address remains fresh in your memory out of everyone else in class. I didn't realize how important I was to you, Metal Mouth. Oh, don't flatter yourself. His lips curl back into a scowl, exposing the itty-bitty braces he hates me pointing out. They've always been a sore subject for him. I just count myself lucky he hasn't found a nickname for me yet, because I know he'd use it any chance he gets. All right, you two, knock it off! Felix flushes red at Miss Fortune's admonishment. It's no secret he hates being chided by any teacher, but Miss Fortune is the one he reveres above them all. Sorry, ma'am. Got carried away. A lion behind her back, but a kitty cat in her presence. And speaking of kitty cats... Oh, hello. A couple of rows behind him, Cat pokes her head out and meets my eyes. She grins and pretends to throw up in response to Felix's bootlicking as I try to suppress my laughter. Is something funny? Not at all. Take your seats, you two. Try not to be late next time, understood? Yes, ma'am. Lucas and I move past Felix's table. At the front of class, go figure, to take our seats near Cat. What took you to? Did you just want to see Metal Mouth's reaction? To us being late? Of course not. Even so, I could have told you how he'd react, with condescension and some hoity-toity remark, as always. True, but as much as he delights in any opportunity to talk smack about you, you know someone not being punctual bugs the hell out of him. He sighed up a storm earlier when you two weren't here while he took attendance. Cat has always been the antithesis of Felix. 
He's grumpy. She's perky. He's boring. She's fun. He's a stickler for the rules. She loves breaking the rules. He's arguably my biggest rival in school. And she's one of my oldest, closest friends. I still remember when Cat Lucas and I first got acquainted. Lucas and I had been hanging out for a couple weeks when we ran into her at the playground. Her outspoken, extroverted nature had made Lucas so uncomfortable at first. But in a weird way, I think that drew Cat to him even more. Like the challenge of earning his friendship appeal to her or something. As it turns out, opposites really do attract. She'd taken slightly longer than I had to break through his defenses, but she got there in the end. People often think Cat chatty and obnoxious, the same way they assume Luke is cold and distant. But I know a sight of them that others don't, and that's what I like about them. So why are you late? Much as I hate to say it, Metal Mouth had a point. You're usually pretty punctual, and it's not like you commute to school. Riley's new roommate held us up. Whoa! You have a new roommate? Since when? Why is this the first time hearing about it? Don't worry, she didn't tell me about him either. So it's a boy, huh? What's he like? He's, um... He's an alien who crash-landed on my balcony one night and turned my life upside down. Now, I live in constant fear that government agents will find and drag him to some super-secret underground laboratory and run all sorts of unspeakable experiments on him. Of course, I don't actually say that for a multitude of reasons. His name's Enoch. He... comes from afar. Very afar, according to him. I mean, the guy didn't even know how to shake someone's hand. For real? Where'd you find this guy, Riley? And when do I get to meet him? Is he not coming to school? N no, he's just staying at my place for now until... Well, actually, I'm not sure how long he'll be staying for. He's weird and mysterious. I want to meet him more than ever. More than once, I've contemplated telling Cat and Lucas the truth about Enoch. Having to hide such a monumental secret from my two best friends especially one this exciting, has been eating me up from the inside. But that'd be insane, right? I can't tell them. I can't tell anyone. Lessons for the first couple hours go by in a blur. Soon enough, lunchtime is upon us. Cat, Lucas, and I take our usual seats with our trays. Ugh, I hate math class. My brain feels like it's overheating. Tell me about it. I can't wait for the weekend. The we- The weekend? The week's just started! Today's Monday! Exactly! It's the worst day of the week because it's the first day of the week! I cast Lucas an incredulous look. No, no. She's got a point. You're both dorks. To my displeasure, the conversation turns back once again to Enoch. Hey, so... This roommate of yours... I didn't mean to eavesdrop, but I... Overheard your conversation a little. Like, when you told him to go home and wait for you there. Oh! You... Heard that? I thought I'd been talking quietly enough. I just hope that's all Lucas overheard. What's the deal with that? You're not letting him roam around the neighborhood by himself? Right. That's because, um... I can't exactly say it's because I'm afraid he'll give himself away as an alien. Come on, Riley. Think of an excuse quickly. He he's sick. Um, he's a... I mean, he is a tourist. Well, he's a tourist. He's never been to San Angeles before, and he wants to take in as much of the sights as possible. But it's dangerous to be out by yourself, especially if you're new to the city. He could get lost, or mugged, or worse! What are you, his babysitter? He gets lost pretty easily, and you saw how clueless he was today? I have every right to be worried. Fair point. How'd you two become roommates anyway? 
Who is he? Just a friend we never knew about? What's his name again? Ezra? Edward? Eunuch! That was his name! That most definitely was not his name. Not that Enoch would even know what a eunuch is, most likely. What I want to know is why you kept him a secret from us. I wasn't keeping him a secret from you guys. Well, I was. Then why haven't you mentioned him before? He doesn't strike me as someone not interesting enough to bring up in conversation at least once. Since when do you two need to know everything about my life and everyone I know? Harsh. I guess we're not as close as I thought we were. And there I was, thinking we'd be BFFs forever. You know that last F stands for forever, right? Saying BFFs forever is totally redundant. Don't change the subject by correcting my English. That is such a Felix move. Hey! Never compare me to him. I mean, Kat's not wrong. Getting a new roommate is no minor development. It just came as a surprise when I saw him this morning. Exactly! If I suddenly got a mysterious roommate, you'd two be the first to know. I tell you all about whatever's going on in my life, don't I? In excruciating amounts of detail, yes. I still haven't forgotten that harrowing story about your drunk babysitter and the naked florist. That's old news! You don't need to hear that story again. I want to hear about your roommate! I can tell Kat and Lucas won't let up on this. I can't tell them the truth, so... What can I say about how Enoch and I know each other that won't seem suspicious? His name's Enoch, and... He's my pen pal! He's my... pen pal? Your pen pal? Yeah! We've been writing letters to each other for the last... five to six years? People still write letters? Wouldn't an email have been easier? Enoch probably has no idea what an email is, let alone how to send and receive one. Hell, he probably doesn't know what letters and pen pals are either. Don't knock the classic pen and paper method, alright? It fleshes out the authenticity of the experience to do it how our ancestors would have. Did you send your letters via carrier pigeon too? Oh har har. But since when have you been the type to write letters? You've never mentioned a pen pal before, let alone that you were writing letters to begin with. Now we find out you've been doing this for five to six years? Uh... I'm sure I must have mentioned it at some point. You probably put it in the back of your mind and forgot. Lucas doesn't look particularly convinced. If anything, he looks twice as suspicious. Cat, however, seems as oblivious as always. So where's he from? Where's who from? Your infamous pen pal Enoch. Where's he from? I'm also curious to know where Enoch's from, to not understand the concept behind a handshake. Yeah, what do they do instead? Um, I'm not sure. Well, you have to at least know where he's from, right? Uh... All I had to do was teach Enoch how to shake someone's hand. One of the most basic interactions two humans could have with one another. Yet for some inane reason, I didn't, and now I'm stuck in this pickle. And in all those stupid movies he's been watching, did not a single one feature a scene of two characters shaking hands? He... comes... from... Why are you talking weird? I'm not talking weird, why are you talking weird? I'm not talking weird, why are you talking weird? I'm not talking weird! You're the one that's talking weird! You're weird! You! Right. Do you... not know where he's from? No, no, I do! He's from... uh... I mean, they would totally look this up, wouldn't they? <laughs> 
<laughs> Just like break out the phone like, where is Zexhalia? I'm gonna be up front. Zexhalia. Zawadia? Did I seriously just say that? An undiscovered inhabitable planet hiding in our solar system and I just blurted its official name out loud? It's not like it'd ring any alarm bells though, right? If Earth hasn't discovered aliens yet, then the name of an alien planet should be meaningless to everyone, including Lucas and Kat. Never heard of it. You sure it's on the map? Positive. It's just not very well known or well documented. Huh. Okay, then. You really don't know how long he's staying with you, though? What's he even here for? Can't exactly say I don't know that either. How are they coming up with this many questions? He's... Like I said, he's a tourist on vacation. He's on vacation. He's spending it here instead of anywhere else? What's wrong with San Angeles? Nothing, but wouldn't he rather spend his vacation traveling the world or doing something adventurous? That's what I'd do. Not everyone lives for adventure like you, Kat. Lucas and Kat are mercifully quiet for a couple minutes as we return to our meals. I poke at my mashed potatoes, which are too dry and gravyless for my liking. The silence doesn't last. Is he cute? C cat Aw, you're blushing! Yeah, because you asked an embarrassing question. Trust me, I'm not asking for me. I'm asking for you. If you get together with the Xenoph guy... <laughs> and they were roommates! <laughs> Oh my god, they were roommates! Precisely! Very funny, you two. I can't help but ponder the question now that Kat's put it into my head. Do I think Enoch's cute? I suppose it's a natural question to ask. Kat and Lucas don't know he's an alien, for one thing, but also... Alien or not, Enoch's still a guy. Aside from the purple skin and red eyes, he's mostly humanoid, so... It's not that weird, is it? That being said, whether he looks human or not, there's no getting around the fact that he's not human. Mom, Dad, meet my boyfriend, Enoch. He's an alien from outer space. Cool, right? Check out his gnarly purple tentacles. Yeah, not exactly the easiest boyfriend to introduce to your parents. Wait a second. Does he have tentacles? Don't most aliens have tentacles? Or is that just a stereotype? Enoch might be insulted if I ask. After all, he took offense when I told him aliens were typically portrayed in movies as grotesque creatures that abduct cows and pro-peoples. She's been staring into space for a while now. Is she still thinking about what I said? You really caught her off guard. Sure, Enoch can be gullible and clingy, but he has a big heart and is very affectionate. What's not to like? I genuinely haven't paid much attention to him looks-wise, though. At least not until this very moment. Plus, whenever he's home, he's purple, and that makes it a little hard to think of him as cute, doesn't it? Uh, Earth to Riley, hello! S sorry what Come on, Riley, quit stalling! Is he cute or not? The people demand answers! All Kat asked was if I thought Enoch was cute. It's a yes or no question. Why am I overthinking this? Oh, but then I had to stomp on Lucas's heart. Mm. But he is cute. Ah. <sighs> I guess I gotta be honest. Sorry, Lucas. You're cute, too. I like you both. I also like Felix. I can't say he's not cute. What's that supposed to mean? I mean, he's sort of cute. In a certain light. So you do think he's cute, then? 
I... Yeah, I figured. Oh, all right, he's cute. He may be a handful, but he's sweet and kind and... He has a nice smile. Aha! I knew it! Dude, you are blushing so hard right now. See, Lucas? And they were roommates! Roommates! Let us know when wedding bells start to toll, would you? Oh, shut up. Blech. Stuck in the last period of the day, my thoughts wander back to Enoch once more. I wonder what he's up to right now. Did he stick to his word and go no further than he was supposed to? Is he safe at home? He couldn't have gotten hurt, could he? Or got lost on the way back and spent the, less, the last several hours wandering the streets searching for his way home? Oh man, get it together, Riley. I've never been such a worry wart before. I guess I'm still a little freaked out, even after a week of letting it sink in that I live with an alien roommate. And don't forget, it counts for a third of your grade, so work hard on this! Uh, what? Wait, what she's talking about? The group project we're meant to do before the end of the year, remember? You've got until this Wednesday to choose your partners, so if you haven't already, start thinking. You heard her. Wanna group up? Was there ever any doubt? With our powers combined, there's no way we don't knock this dumb project out of the park. Yeah! Then we're gonna take our perfect score and go shove it in Metal Mouth's big smug fi- and remember, this is a two-man project, so you have to work with Metal Mouth. <laughs> and we knew that was coming. So what now? Class dismissed? Oh, right. Forgot about that part. Two people max? That means... Oh, yup. A heavy mood settles over the three of us. Looks like this town ain't big enough for the three of us. Certainly seems so. Uh... Guys? Why is the alien music playing? One of us has to go. Guys? There's only one way for us to settle this. She reaches into her bag. What are you... We'll have to settle this? With a vote! Cat withdraws a notepad from her bag, tears out three sheaves of paper, and hands them out to each of us. Are we really doing this? Got any better ideas? No. Just write down the name of the person you want to kick out of the group. Fair and square. Oh, why couldn't it just be a group of three? If we can't all work together, then there's not much of a choice. A vote is the fairest way to determine the odd one out. Is it? Can we draw straws? How am I expected to choose between my two best friends, though? No matter who I pick, I'll be hurting one of them. This is like when the sidewalk is only wide enough for two people, so one of us has to walk behind the others. I guess after this, we'll all know which one of us that person is. Yeah, I mean... If it was me, this is what I would do. I will fall on the sword! For no reason whatsoever, I find myself inexplicably writing down my own name, folding up my vote and handing it to Kat. <clears throat> Once the votes are read, the decision is final. Person voted out will be asked to leave this dumb project immediately. I'll read the votes. She unfolds the first piece of paper. First vote... Cat. Eat gods! How dare one of you vote for me? Isn't that the whole point of holding a vote? Next vote! Lucas. There will be blood. And last vote? Riley? We're tied! Uh. What happens now? I don't know, I never anticipated a tie! Who'd you all vote for? I voted for you. Wait, you did? I voted for you too! Then... who voted for... 
They turn in unison to stare at me, bewildered. Riley, did you... vote for yourself? I hang my head. Yeah. Yeah, I did. You voted for yourself... for what? Why not? Why? Why not? Why, though? Honestly, I have no idea. I guess I thought it'd be funny. You can't vote for yourself! That screws up the whole vote! So now what do we do? Hmm... Let's just put this on hold for now, okay? In the meantime, I've got soccer practice to get to. I'll see you tomorrow! Just like that, Kat scoops up the rest of our votes and bounds out of the classroom. Lucas turns back to me. Walk me to the subway? Sure thing, buddy. I got you. Lucas and I leave school together. He takes the subway home, so most days we walk and talk until we part ways at the station. We spend the next ten minutes discussing the latest video games and which streamers. <laughs> which. Nice. But eventually, he falls silent. That isn't uncommon with Lucas, but we've been friends long enough that I can tell the difference between his usual comfortable silences and when he actually has something on his mind. Hey, I need to grab dinner for me and Enoch. Wanna tag along? Lead the way. Healthy living. We step into the nearest convenience store. What are you looking for? The cheapest pre-made dinners I can find. Having budgeting problems? What I do have is a roommate seemingly intent on bankrupting me in the shortest time possible. Do you have any idea how much food I've bought or cooked for him in the last week alone? Can he cook his own meals? No! S sorry The thought of Enoch cooking brings up... bad memories. Let's just say him having full run of the kitchen isn't the best idea. Lucas shuffles along behind me as I wander down the aisle of ready-made meals. Ooh, this sounds good. Chicken, rice with carrots, and... Ugh! Cucumbers! Well, it's dirt cheap, so I guess it'll do. What you got against cucumbers? They're delicious! Grabbing two cartons, I head to the counter, where a small queue awaits. So, wanna tell me what's going on with you? What's going on with me? You look like you have something on your mind. There's no getting anything past you, is there? Fine. There's something I wanted to ask you. It's not another question about Enoch, is it? I don't think I can handle another game of 20 questions about Enoch's fake life story. There's this... There's this movie coming out in theaters tomorrow. It's not new or anything. It's been around for... like, three years now. Why is it back in theaters, then? I'm getting to that. It's because the sequel's coming out in a couple weeks. It's some publicity campaign thing. They're re-releasing the first movie in theaters so people can watch it before the sequel. Tickets are free, and it's a limited time event. I never watched the first movie, in theaters or otherwise, so I'd like to, before the sequel comes out. Supposedly, the director's films are known for good animation and storytelling and... Yeah, I just... I just thought... Uh, I mean, that we could... He's stumbling over his words in a rush to get them out. A behavioral trait of his I'm all too familiar with. I know this is a super long-winded way of asking, but... I was wondering if... Perhaps you'd... Like to see it with me. Watch a movie? For free? I don't see the downside. What's it called? Mm. Is something wrong? Uh. Considering all the teasing he's made at Cat's expense for being a drama queen, it's ironic he's now milking the suspense for all it's worth. I won't laugh. Come on, tell me. It's an anime movie. 
called Amorous Apartments. It's kind of, sort of, like a romantic comedy. Maybe that's not something guys watch, but I don't know. You don't have to see it with me if you don't want to. Even though we've known each other for years, Lucas still gets uncomfortable broaching topics with me that he thinks are awkward or embarrassing. Since when are romantic comedies or anime movies gender specific? I just don't want you getting the wrong idea. Two people watching a romantic movie together. At first glance, it wouldn't be amiss for people to assume we were on a date. <laughs> Lucas. This is why I didn't want to ask you in front of Kat. I doubt I'd ever hear the end of it from her. Plus, I'm sure she thinks movies like these are total cringe. If it's not action or horror, she's asleep within seconds. So, what do you say? Will you go with me? It's nice of Lucas to ask, because obviously he's extremely embarrassed. He barely got the name of the movie out. That being said, does this even sound like something I'd want to watch? I could just agree to it for Lucas's sake. It's not like I'm paying for a ticket. Let's go! He's, he worked up his courage to ask you out to a thing, given a chance. Why not? After all, it is free. Yeah. Cool. If the reviews are to be trusted, it'll be great. Let's say... We meet at the cinema tomorrow, around 7. Sounds like a plan. You two done talking, you're holding up the line. Uh, oh, sorry. When I return home, I find Enoch lying on the floor, legs propped up on the couch and arms stretched overhead. Clutching the remote in one hand, he's switching through channels on TV at random, clearly bored out of his mind. But he found his way home. As soon as he hears the door close, he leaps to his feet and runs over with a big smile, not unlike how a dog might greet their owner after a long day of work. <laughs> no, we are not there yet. Welcome home, honey! Uh, what? Isn't that a thing people say to welcome someone home? <laughs> yeah, but that's like between lovers. Well, I love you, Riley, so I don't see what's the problem. Oh, I wasn't expecting that. Enoch, I'm not sure how it works on Sexhalia, but here on Earth, we don't throw words like love or honey around so... carelessly. At least, not in North America. I thought honey was a term of endearment for humans. Doesn't it mean something sweet? Yes, but that's a term reserved for family or couples and maybe even really close friends. I gesture between us for emphasis. I'm not sure if our relationship counts. I thought we were friends. Are we not? We are! We're just not close enough to use the word love. What about your friend Lucas? You said he was your best friend. Do you love him? Uh, well, I obviously care about Lucas. You could say I love him, but like strictly as a friend. That doesn't mean I call him honey in public or tell him I love him. Never mind how I'd feel, he'd never be comfortable with that. But we're not in public right now, are we? So why can't I tell you I love you? I love you because you're special to me, Riley. You're my very first Earthling. First Earthling? The first Earthling I ever met. Just like how I'm the first alien you've ever met. That makes our relationship special, doesn't it? Fair enough. I obviously can't say that about anyone else. You've also given me a place to stay, food to eat. You didn't report me to your human authorities. You've been teaching me the ways of your people. See? You've done so much for me. That's why I say I love you. Oh. Th 
Thank you, Enoch. He really says the sweetest things sometimes, but all this talk of love is a little much. Do you not love me, then? Have I badly misjudged the nature of our relationship? It's not that. Love is just... a very, very broad term to use, and it's typically reserved for someone you have strong feelings for. You don't have strong feelings for me? Feelings of friendship, sure. I just don't know if I'd call it love? I don't understand. Friendship? Love? What's the difference? I love you because you're my closest friend on Earth. Okay, more like my only friend, but it still counts. And it doesn't change the way I feel about you. This is sounding more and more like I'm rejecting an actual love confession. Enoch, I do feel... Uh, strongly about you, just not romantically. At least I didn't think I did before today. Not until Kat inserted that thought into my head. So you do not love me because we are not romantically involved like a couple. Why don't we become a couple then? Again, not something to be thrown around lightly. We've known each other for a week, tops. But in one of your aunt's movies, this princess married someone she'd known for less than a day. If they can do that on Earth, why can't we? That's a cartoon, Enoch. Please tell me you're not relying on cartoons to learn about humanity. I don't know if maybe they seem realistic to an alien, but I wouldn't look to movies with talking cars, fighting pandas, and secret agent penguins for an accurate depiction of the real world. I knew all those movies. <laughs> You mean people don't spontaneously break into song the moment they find their soulmate? Unfortunately not. No? Yeah, I thought that was weird too. I still don't think we need to be a couple in order to love one another. I was fine showing my fellow Zexhalians affection back home. I love you whether or not we're a couple, Riley. And while you may not love me now... That doesn't mean we can't reach that stage in our relationship eventually. Hey, Enoch. How much do you know of how romance works? Like, in general? Uh, I think I know the basics. I have to admit my curiosity is piqued now. In that case, how much do you know about... <laughs> the birds and the bees. This is the important one. Kissing. That's when two humans mash their lips together and make weird faces, right? Bit of a derivative description, but in essence, yes. Yeah, we don't do that where I'm from. That's just weird. The first kiss I saw in a movie was traumatizing. I can imagine. I thought they were chewing each other's faces off. But I picked up enough contextual clues to figure it was probably a way humans show affection for one another. Shaking hands as a greeting, and touching lips as a sign of affection. Bizarre. Truly, truly bizarre. Still, if this really is a way humans show their affection, then I suppose I have no choice but to learn it too. Oh boy. Well, here we go. Without warning, he takes hold of me by the shoulders and peers into my eyes. Riley! Will you please teach me how to kiss? What? What? What's wrong, Riley? I need to learn how to kiss so I don't embarrass myself the next time someone tries to kiss me. How often do people try to kiss you anyway? Plus, I want to show you my affection. Now, how do I do this? Enoch, wait! Kissing isn't... You can't just... It's only between two people who... Enoch ignores my protest as his face draws closer to mine. So... I just lean in? Do I do anything special with my lips? Well, only one way to find out. Here... I... 
Come! <laughs> you gotta admire his enthusiasm and willingness to try new things. <laughs> Wait! You don't understand! This is extremely inappropriate! Enoch! I extricate myself from his grasp at the very last second, much to his visible confusion. What's the matter, Riley? Should I pucker my lips more? Yes! I mean, no! Ah! Friends don't do that. With their friends, I mean. Kisses aren't something you give out freely. But I'm not giving them out freely. I'm only giving them to you. Because you're my friend and you're special to me. Shouldn't I show affection to a friend so they know I care about them? This isn't something friends do. That's what I'm trying to tell you. You can't just give people kisses like they're store-bought gifts. Hershey's kisses, on the other hand. This is so frustrating. Why do humans keep gatekeeping affection like this? You should have landed in, like, South America or France or somewhere, man. Where it's just like, ah, you smooch everybody, whatever. I tell you I love you and you say I can't do that. I try to show you instead and you say I can't do that either. Why can't I show you affection the way all these humans do? Is it because I'm an alien? Is it weird for an alien to love a human? Or you don't want to kiss an alien? That's not it, I think. I add that last part because now that he's brought it up, it does bring to mind how weird it would be to kiss an alien. Why do I almost feel disappointed? Did part of me secretly hope for it to happen? To kiss an alien? But what the hell am I thinking? Still, it would have been quite the achievement. To become potentially the first person on Earth to kiss an alien? Not only that, but it would have been my... my first kiss. Enoch keeps looking to me to have all the answers for him, but how would he react if he found out I have the same amount of kissing experience he has? Listen, Enoch. Kissing, especially on the lips, is reserved for people who love each other. And I mean that in a romantic sense. So, like the honey thing... Not something friends do. Not unless they were very close and totally okay with it. And... We're not close enough for that. Sorry. No, don't apologize. It's just... I am so confused. Why are Earthlings so complicated? If kissing and telling someone you love them are ways of showing affection, I don't see why they have to be restricted to couples. We may not be romantically involved, Riley, but that doesn't stop me from feeling love for you or from wanting to show it. I slump onto the couch, exhausted. Enoch plops down next to me. So what's for dinner? Are you making burgers again? Nice try, but no. Then... Pizza? Fish and chips? Ooh, I do love that. Steak? Club sandwiches? Ramen? No to all of that. I bought us a couple pre-made dinners. Yes, pre-made... What? Pre-made dinners. They're meals you microwave and eat on the spot. Sorry, Enoch. Can't eat gourmet all the time, you know? I'm not getting next month's allowance till the end of the week, so... We have to make do. Digging around in my bag, I take out the two small cartons and hand one to him. Enoch's brow furrows with suspicion as he reads off the packaging. Chicken rice with carrots and cucumbers, pre-made. Microwave for one to two minutes and consume within two hours of purchase. What is this? It's dinner. Honestly, it doesn't look terrible for a cheap meal. Microwaved cucumbers, though. That's just so wrong. But... But... <laughs> you haven't even tried it yet. Enoch makes a sad little whining noise and slumps over in disappointment. I pat him on the back as I head into the kitchen with both cartons. A few seconds later, he gets up and joins me. 
Your friend Lucas didn't seem to like me very much today. Uh, what makes you say that? He didn't seem all that interested in talking to me. He barely answered any of my questions. Huh, I guess I didn't give Enoch enough credit this morning. He did pick up on Lucas's closed-off demeanor after all. I was only trying to be friendly. Did I not make a good first impression? Uh... Oh no. He hates me, doesn't he? No, he doesn't! But he definitely doesn't like me, right? Um... Lucas doesn't dislike you. How do I get him to like me, then? Well, I do have some pointers. For starters, give him a little space to breathe next time. Space to breathe? Was I taking up too much of his air? You were advancing menacingly towards him like a hungry customer approaching an all-you-can-eat buffet table. That tends to turn people off. You also asked him, like, 50 questions in the span of 20 seconds. Can't blame the guy for getting overwhelmed. Oh. Yeah, you're probably right. I sense Enoch's still crestfallen about his failure to bond with Lucas, so I try to cheer him up. Look, it's not entirely your fault. Lucas isn't... comfortable around strangers. He takes a while to warm up to someone new. So what you're saying is... I should spend more time with him to get him to like me. I shrug as I put our meals into the microwave. That depends on if you ever see him again. Lucas is a private person, though. He doesn't go out of his way to meet new people unless he really wants to, or he knows they share some common interests. I don't mention the third route to befriending Lucas. Being as persistent as possible. That's how Kat did it, and I imagine it's how Enoch would do it too. My only concern is that the more time Enoch spends around other humans, especially my friends, the likelier it is that he'll blow his cover. But I can still get Lucas to like me eventually, right? I want to be friends with your friends, Riley! That way we can all hang out together and I can talk to another human being who isn't you! Not that there's anything wrong with your company, of course! Besides, I trust your judgment. Anyone you'd be friends with would have to be good people, too. Since we're on this topic, you should know I had to cover for you at school today. Now that they know you exist, my friends were asking a ton of questions about you. You had to cover me? Why? I told you, I don't get cold. You don't need to cover me with anything. As I was saying, I had to make up a bunch of stuff about you. If you ever get to spend time with them, we'd need to keep your story straight. Keep my story straight? Can a story even be curved to begin with? All your aunt's books are so thick and hard to bend. <laughs> I don't really understand, but... Does this mean I can meet your friends? Eh... <sighs> It's inevitable they'll come over at some point. Kat was extremely enthusiastic about meeting you. You... want me to meet a cat? I mean, that's okay, too. I was... hoping to make more human friends, but I do think your earthling animals are very adorable. Cat's not a cat. Cat's a girl. The cat isn't a cat? I don't understand. Is this some sort of Earthling riddle? No, you dolt. Cat's a human. Her name's Cat. And she's definitely not an animal. You should see her out on the soccer field, though. That girl's an absolute menace to play against. Your friend is a menace? Isn't that a bad thing? Look, when my friends eventually come over, you'll get your chance to spend time with them. Awesome! I can't wait! But before we get too carried away, there's something I want to ask you. I've been dreading this conversation, but... If this roommate arrangement is going to continue, then this has to happen sooner rather than later. When I first saw Enoch that fateful Sunday night, I'd been terrified. Although I'd tried to deny it, I'd known right away that he wasn't human. 
No human had purple skin and demonic red eyes, and they definitely didn't parachute down onto random people's balconies at night. I didn't really have a plan in mind when I agreed to let him stay. I didn't even know why he'd come to Earth in the first place. And I still don't. Enoch do dodges the question every time I bring it up. Even though he's been fascinated by all things Earth-related, I haven't gotten the sense he dislikes his home planet. In fact, there are times he talks about Zexhalia with such longing in his voice he almost sounds homesick. So then, why did he leave and come to Earth? Though I've tried not to think about it, it's crossed my mind more than once that he might have come to Earth for... nefarious purposes. That's the stereotypical plotline with aliens, isn't it? I put that thought to rest pretty quickly when I realized how much of a goofball he is, but... What if it's an act? What if he's here to gather intel on Earth so his alien buddies can invade us? By letting him stay with me and not reporting him to the authorities, could I somehow be enabling his plans to conquer the human race? Riley? You wanted to ask me something? Right. Enoch, listen. What I'm gonna ask you is important, and I need a proper answer. No evasion, no excuses, the truth. Since I'm your roommate and I'm keeping you safe, I think I have the right to know this. Enoch, why are you here? I'm here because you're microwaving my dinner, Riley. No, not in the kitchen. Why are you here on Earth? Why did you come to Earth in the first place? Enoch stiffens. The look of concern that briefly crosses his face would have been imperceptible had I not been observing him closely for his reaction. What made you leave home, Enoch? Uh. I hold my breath awaiting his response. Um, well, I... Oh, come on. Ah! Gah! Oh... Oh, our food's done. Yay, I'm starving! In his haste to avoid answering, Enoch rushes to open the microwave. Hmm, sus. Enoch, wait! It's hot! You'll... Ah! Enoch! Are you okay? Are you hurt? Did you... He takes both meals out completely unharmed. Just kidding! Oh my... Don't do that! I'm an alien, remember? My skin doesn't burn. We sit down to eat. Pointedly ignoring me, Enoch starts scarfing down his food, caring not about scalding his tongue like a human might, nor about the bland taste in comparison to the meals we've had in the past. Enoch? Yes, Riley? You still haven't answered my question. Ah, yes, about that. He lowers his fork, eyes darting around the room as if determined to look anywhere except at me. Well, I've always wanted to visit Earth. I told you that, didn't I? Yeah, but is that really the only reason? You sometimes talk as if you don't believe you'll ever go back home. Uh, well, I won't. Actually, it's more so that I can't. Not anytime soon, anyway. Why not? He hesitates as if trying to think of some way to avoid answering. When that fails, sensing I won't take silence as an answer, he relents. I left home because... Because my home planet is at war right now. Can't say I saw that coming. War? You mean, a legitimate, invasive, guns-blazing kind of war? Are there other types of war on Earth? No, I just didn't expect to hear about something so human taking place on your world. Though I shouldn't be surprised, something like war is pretty universal. I don't like talking about it. The important thing is Zexhalia isn't safe anymore. That's why I fled. I had to go somewhere safe, and I picked Earth. Because I've always wanted to visit. But... 
You could have gone to a different planet if you wanted. I could have. Would you rather I had? N no, that's not it. I mean, I'm happy you're here, Enoch. Aw, thanks. I'm happy to be here, too. So, Enoch claims to have no ulterior motives for coming to Earth. Provided I believe him, and I don't yet have reason not to, I can put some of my unfounded worries of an alien invasion to rest. And yet this news about Sexhalia being at war troubles me too. Does that mean there are other refugees fleeing his planet in search of new homes? If Enoch can find his way to Earth, so can others. What if they're not all as friendly as he is? Is Earth about to receive an influx of aliens? Here not for invasion, but for refuge? Enoch, who's your planet at war with? How bad is it? Can you never go back, or...? Hey, this show's boring! What else is on? Enoch snatches up the remote, quick to change both the topic of conversation and the channel. The TV cuts now to the evening news, and a familiar image pops up on screen behind two news anchors. A week has passed since the sighting of a mysterious unidentified object flying over San Angeles last Sunday evening. No official explanation has surfaced as of yet, but rumors and conspiracy theories continue to spread like wildfire on shredded and litter. Riley, look, it's my spaceship! His what? The blurry image on screen shows a bright orange speck hurtling through the night sky. Sure enough, it's Enoch's out-of-control spaceship, frozen in time on its ill-fated path of mid-air self-destruction. Is it really, as is the popular theory, a UFO? A shooting star falling out of the sky? A military drone spinning out of control? The possibilities are endless, and citywide interest is still going strong. They're still talking about this? Move on already! Please do. I don't want anyone looking too deep into this and stumbling upon the truth. It's funny. Any other time I'd scoff at these crackpot theories, as I'm sure many are doing at this very moment. Yet, for once, the most ludicrous theory is actually the correct one. See, Enoch, this is why I was so apprehensive about letting you wander around on your own. It's been a week, yet people are still talking about your disastrous arrival on Earth. Even so, what's the big deal? People can speculate all they want. They still wouldn't find me. Yeah, but why take the risk? I don't want anyone getting any ideas about conducting a proper investigation into the events of last week. If someone saw you parachuting onto my balcony, or if someone found the remains of your ship... I frown as an alarming thought hits me. Speaking of which... Is that something we should be concerned about? My ship? It exploded, didn't it? Whatever was left of it must have crashed somewhere. Hmm. That's a good point, actually. This is only occurring to you now? I could say the same to you! My mind is already racing with new, increasingly frightening possibilities. Any random citizen could have stumbled upon the wreckage of Enoch's ship in the last week, and he didn't think this could be an issue. Don't worry, Riley. I'm sure it's fine. Probably. Enoch, as usual, brushes my concerns aside with a casual, unbothered ease that's grown on me now as equal parts endearing and aggravating. Even if someone found my ship, they wouldn't recognize it as anything... abnormal. How can you be sure? Because only an alien like me can see our technology for what it really is. We're not in any danger of being discovered by Earthlings. Not unless they've learned how to locate and operate sex alien tech. Enoch must see the hesitation on my face, because he can tell I'm not convinced. If it bothers you so much, I can show you what I mean. His smile turns sly. I think I know where it landed. If you take me out tonight, I'll show you. Take you out? Yeah! I want to see what the neighborhood's like at night. Oh. That's what he meant. Kat and her stupid questions have my wires all crossed today. <laughs> Haven't had your fill walking around yet? How was it, by the way? Walking home today, I mean. It was fun! I did as you said and didn't go anywhere I wasn't supposed to. 
I stuck to the streets and enjoyed the freedom of walking among humans. It was surprisingly liberating. The point is, I haven't been out at night yet. And, as they say, there's no time like the present. Wow, you... use that phrase perfectly. Color me impressed. There's a color called impressed? Where is it on the rainbow? And you ruined it. So, can we go? But... my homework... Which is better, doing homework or spending time with your alien roommate? I can't just not do my homework. Last time I handed in an assignment late, Felix didn't shut up about it for two whole weeks. I'm not saying to not do your work. All I'm saying is... Why do now what you can always do later? <laughs> you make a compelling point. As always. So, can we... Of all people, an alien is convincing me to the proc yeah, let's try that again. Of all people, an alien is convincing me to procrastinate on my homework. That has to count for something, right? Let's go, but if this goes to another scene, I'm gonna have to stop. <laughs> if I don't relent now, you'll never stop bugging me about it. Might as well get it over with. Hooray! We can't take too long, though. We won't, I promise. Thanks, Riley! We'll pass by the park on our way back, right? Uh, sure. Why? You'll see. Why is he being all mysterious? I pack up our leftovers as Enoch, ru Enoch rushes to get changed. Ready! Nope, try again. Ready! One of these days, you'll step out of the apartment before I can stop you and give poor Mrs. Potts a heart attack. Ah. Drat, I'm enjoying this so much, as you can tell by the fact I played it for two hours. <laughs> ah, I just didn't want to stop. It's so good. I love these characters. The art's beautiful. The music's good. The writing is so good. Ah. I had such a good time with this. I'm so sad I have to stop, but my throat's done. <laughs> so there you go, guys. A very, very long gander for you today, but I hope you enjoyed it. Sorry I had to stop just when things were getting all mysterious, but hopefully that'll encourage you to check out the demo yourself. I will have a link to that down below, as well as links to Wholesome Ray's Twitter and YouTube pages where you can follow along as he works on this project. All right. Well, thanks again, Wholesome Rays, for reaching out to me. You've got an amazing uh, start to this right now. I'm very excited to see how it develops. And I'm sorry I couldn't play more. <laughs> but I had a lot of fun. And I hope you guys enjoyed the gander today. Thank you very much for joining me. And until next time, I will see you later.